Welcome to the TechMind Factory video blog and the second video from the series Be a better Azure developer. In this video, I would like to present how to use dependency injection design pattern in the Azure Functions source code. If you would like to discover more developer templates, I encourage you to use above link presented on this slide. Before we start, it's worth to mention that dependency injection design pattern enables you to create loosely coupled relationships between the classes in the source code. Ok, let's start with the Azure function. This is the sample project I created, you will find it also in the Azure Developer Templates repository on my GitHub. So, to enable dependency injection in the functions code, I have to start from adding NuGet package. So, I will right click on the project and click Manage NuGet packages. And the package that will enable me to, to start playing with dependency injection is called Microsoft.Azure.Functions.Extensions. Once I add this package, I will be able to configure dependency injection. In my sample project, I started with adding startup class. So let me open it and let's discuss what's happening here. As you can see at the top, I have function startup assembly attribute. And this attribute is provided by Microsoft.Azure.Functions.Extensions uh, NuGet package we added before. Second thing is that my startup class derives from function startup class. And this class is also provided by Microsoft.Azure.Functions.Extensions package. It's worth to mention that the code in the startup class will be called when the application, so function app, is launched. Ok, so let's discuss what's happening below, inside the startup class. So, I have private field configuration and in this configuration I will store the configuration for my function app and some settings from the local settings JSON file in this case. There is one overridden method called configure. As you can see there is one parameter, iFunctionsHostBuilder. And inside the configure method, I have a configure settings method invocation and this is the method I created. And inside this method, what I'm doing, I'm retrieving the uh, configuration using configuration builder. And I would like to include uh, configuration from local settings JSON file and also from environment variables. And once I create the config, I will be able to access settings stored, for instance, in local settings JSON file. As you can see, I have one setting for mail serv service with the property SMTP from address. So here, and in this configure settings method, once I have access to the settings from local settings JSON file, I can create new instance of mail service settings class here. I will show you that. It's simple POCO class uh, with one property. And what I can do, I can retrieve the SMTP from address property, I can create the mail service settings instance class and register it as singleton in my dependency injection uh, container. And once I invoke configure uh, settings uh, method in the overridden configure method, I can add a singleton with my mail service. So let's see what's happening here. I'm registering mail service class as singleton. Let me display this class. This class uh, implements interface called iMail service and inside this iMail service interface I have only one method, send invitation to the specific email address. So if I get back to the mail service class, you will see here that I have access to mail settings, um, mail service settings um, instance, and also also I'm I'm using logger here, but I'm not using uh, the new keyword anywhere anywhere in the source code. I'm using dependency injection here. So mail service settings and uh, iLogger instance, those will be uh, injected during the startup of my Azure function. So once I ha have uh, these properties, um, uh, these private, fil private fields instantiated, I can use them in my source code. 
So here in the send invitation uh, method, I'm using logger just for, for, for testing and for the showcase. I'm using logger to, uh, to display information that email was sent to the specific email address from and here I'm providing the SMTP from address uh, value. So if I get back to the startup class, you will see that here in the configure method, I can register all services and all dependencies I will use in my source code of the function app. Using dependency injection design pattern in the Azure functions enables you to keep your solution clean and you can easily manage different dependencies in the source code. So I really encourage you to do it. Next step is to modify the function source code. So this is my mail trigger function here and this is the HTTP trigger. As you can see, I removed the static keyword. So right now my mail trigger class is not static. There is also run method and it's also not static anymore. And here in my mail trigger class, I added constructor and inside this constructor, I have iMail service instance injected. So once application is launched, iMail service uh, implementation will be injected in the mail trigger function here. And if I scroll down here, I have uh, this run method here and I'm trying to uh, discover email either from a query in the request or from the body. And once I have email retrieved, I can invoke mail service send invitation method here, passing the email address. So let's see it in action uh, using Postman. I will launch this function application right now on the local host. It started correctly. Here I have the local host URL for the function for my mail trigger. And right now I will open Postman. This is the Postman a tool I will use to send the request to my function app. I will click send and you can see that here I'm passing the email address. If I click send, I have uh, 200 OK status so I can get back to the function. And here in the function logs, you can see that email sent to and it was sent to the address I provided in the request. So dependency injection works correctly. If you would like to use the sample I presented in this video, I encourage you to visit Azure Developer Templates website I created. The link will be provided in the video description. Under the samples library, you will find the section called Azure function with dependency injection. And here you will find description what packages were used in the sample. And you will also have the preview of the source code. And there, there will be also the link to the source code repository. So I really encourage you to, to visit Azure developer templates. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you have any additional questions, do not hesitate to contact me either on Twitter or LinkedIn. And of course, I encourage you to visit my blog techmindfactory.com. See you in the next video.